There might be a sneaky little culprit that is making you toot yourself to the moon and back that takes over your intestines and makes them feel like an alien is fighting and scratching and clawing its way out of your innards. Yeah, good times. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Let Me Learn Ya. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about something called sugar alcohols. It sounds fun, sugar plus alcohol, but for millions of Americans, it is not fun at all. It is the literal opposite of fun. If you are somebody who works out frequently, specifically in weightlifting, bodybuilding, powerlifting, if you're somebody who follows a keto diet, a paleo diet, an extremely low calorie diet, or has diabetes, or chews gum, brushes your teeth, you have probably frequently come into contact with sugar alcohols. These sugar alcohols are super popular, but they can cause many unwanted side effects in many individuals. And most of the time, the claims that companies make about these sugar alcohols are not true. So in today's episode, you'll learn what sugar alcohols are, how to easily identify them, what the truth is behind them, and whether or not they'll make you poop your pants. Sugar alcohols are also known as polyols, AKA no to low calorie sweeteners. I just like how it sounds, polyol, and are used in many, many foods as a sweetener or bulking agent. They can be found naturally in certain foods such as peaches, avocados, and prunes, because we all know why people eat prunes, to make you poop your pants. Maybe not poop your pants, but you know what I mean. But most of you will experience sugar alcohols in the wilds of the grocery store amongst the industrial made and processed foods that sugar alcohols are added into. Sugar alcohols are commonly used in things like any type of sugar-free candy or product, toothpastes, gums, sugar-free hard candies, for instance, throat lozenges, anything diet, anything low calorie, pretty much anything paleo, unless they're using monk fruit or stevia, keto, any type of foods or products specifically made for those with diabetes. And they're very prevalent in anything protein related, such as protein powders, bars, cookies, pretty much anything workout related, pre-workout drinks, all that stuff. Companies use these sugar alcohols because they are low digestible sugars, meaning that you only partially digest and absorb these, and they are more slowly absorbed than sugar, therefore not having as much of an impact on your sugar, and therefore also not having as much of an impact on raising your insulin levels. This is the main reason why these products are very popular in foods made for people with diabetes, and very popular with people who who are into keto and low calorie and all of that because people think that by eating these sugar alcohols, they're getting the sweet without the calories or without the blood sugar spike. Companies will tell you that they have zero net carbs on a product because they have 15 grams of sugar alcohols and you don't absorb any of that energy. But that's not true. They are either purposely leaving out the truth or they just don't understand how sugar alcohols work. The amount that you're actually gonna absorb from each sugar alcohol varies depending on the sugar alcohol, but it can range from as low as 5% to as high as 70%. Some of the most commonly used sugar alcohols are sorbitol, mannitol, and isomalt. You absorb about half of the energy from mannitol and isomalt, and you absorb almost 70% from sorbitol. So let's say you're eating a delicious protein cookie and the product contains 10 grams of sorbitol. The product claims that it has zero net carbs because it factors out all of those sugar alcohols, but you're actually absorbing seven grams of that sorbitol. Now for most people, this isn't going to matter because getting a couple extra carbohydrates absorbed ain't gonna bug them. But for somebody who's on super strict keto, where you can only eat 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrates a day, and you're frequently munching on keto processed foods, which I know a ton of keto people are doing, if you eat enough of those foods and you're just not factoring in those grams and then you're eating carbohydrates somewhere else, 
you may get bumped out of ketosis. The takeaway here is that yes, you do absorb energy from these sugar alcohols. It is less than what you would absorb from sugar and the impact that these sugar alcohols have on your blood sugar is absolutely reduced in comparison to sugar. Now, why should you beware of sugar alcohols? Well, let me tell you, because it has to do with poop in your pants and being curled up in a fetal position because you are in so much pain from your intestines feeling like they're going to explode. You just want to end it all. Most simple sugars are rapidly absorbed in your small intestine. They hardly ever reach your large intestine where the majority of all the little microbes that live in your gut reside. But because these sugar alcohols take more time to digest, they make it through your small intestine and kick it in your large intestine. And all the little bacteria critters that are kicking it there are like sweet dessert. And they start nom gnawing down. And the same thing happens to them when they eat that happens to us when we eat. They release waste, they expel gas. If you are somebody who has something like irritable bowel syndrome or celiac or inflammatory bowel disease that just is very sensitive to changes going on in your intestinal area, you could experience a lot of cramping, bloating, horrible, horrible pain. Additionally, these sugar alcohols attract water, meaning that as they're traveling through your small intestine, being like, woohoo, we aren't getting absorbed. Ha ha ha, joke's on you, fool. They are pulling water with them. So by the time they get to your large intestine, they are bringing a tsunami. And what happens when a lot of water enters into your large intestine? You got it, the trots, the runs, the harsh browns, if you will. So these sugar alcohols can cause gas, cramping, bloating, overall uncomfortableness, and or diarrhea. Not everyone will experience these symptoms and it depends on a lot of different factors. For instance, do you frequently consume foods that have sugar alcohols in them to the point where your body has become used to bringing these sugars in, processes them well, and you don't experience any side effects? It depends on how much you eat in one sitting. You might be able to tolerate five to 10 grams of sugar alcohols in one sitting, but you might not be able to tolerate any more than that. It depends on your personal intestinal microbiome. And of course, if you have any types of GI issues like irritable bowel syndrome, you are sensitive to something called FODMAPs, which are specific types of carbohydrates, and the P in FODMAP stands for polyol. If you wanna learn more about FODMAPs and suspect you might have a problem with that, definitely check out my video that talks about all things FODMAPs. So maybe you're somebody who is like, you know, I've been working out and I've been having a lot of gas lately. I guess it is my protein powder or my protein bars, or my protein cookies, or my protein snacks, or my protein oatmeal. Or maybe you're somebody who's like, I just want to avoid this crap because I don't want to crap. There is a very easy way to look for sugar alcohols on your product. And that is look for anything that ends in OL. The most commonly used sugar alcohols are mannitol, sorbitol, xylitol, I think it's lactitol, <laughs> maltitol, Erythritol, they're all alls. Think alcohol, there's an all. I don't wanna poop out my butt. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know you guys, just pure genius here. The only exceptions are isomalt and hydrogenated starch hydrolysates. Overall, sugar alcohols are generally recognized as safe for most individuals, and they usually only cause a problem in specific individuals and in cases which I mentioned. Current research, however, is starting to uncover that they may have more of an impact on blood sugar than we originally thought, and that they may affect our microbiome in potentially negative ways. However, 
that's a story for another time. I personally try to avoid sugar alcohols when I can, and if I can't, I'm like, meh. I prefer to regulate the amount of sugar that I eat as opposed to replacing it with these other products, but certain people do need to because of their specific needs. Thus far, research hasn't reported any long-term negative effects from using sugar alcohols, just the short term, which I explained. So go forth, conquer. Drink your diet sodas and eat your protein cookies without fear, unless you're somebody with irritable bowel syndrome or FODMAPs or what have you. And if you're somebody who's been eating a lot of these products and have also been experiencing a lot of GI issues, hopefully this will give you insight into why you might be having those GI issues. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you do want to hear about the research going on about sugar alcohols and the microbiome and potentially impacting blood sugar and all that good fun stuff. And if you want to have a freaking laugh of a lifetime, check out the link I'm going to put in the description for, is it Haribo? 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. It's those German gummy bears. The link is to Amazon reviews for the sugar-free version and they are hysterically funny. But trigger warning, there's a lot of gas and poo-poo talk, <laughs> which I find amusing because I'm a child. There'll also be a couple links to some research if you wanna look into the topic further. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for watching and that's it. I'm out. Bye. Do you poop your pants? Do you frequently poop your pants? 14 hours my ass, okay? These batteries don't work ever. Why are people allowed to lie about batteries so much? I'm looking at you, Apple. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode. Ooh, is that the volume right there? Oh. Ah. Oh. Mm. Ha. Ah. Why is there something in my eyeball? Probably freaking cat hair. I'm the cat lady. What? <laughs> Zorbital? What is this, an alien creature? from Mars, hey, that would make sense because it feels like an alien when it's trying to crawl its way out of your body. I'm gonna tell you what. My brain is not connected to my mouth. Why is that true? Gotta move these stupid things. They're getting in my way. Ow, I hit my not funny bone. Polyobenzyl methylengocolicotahydride. Start pulling water into your tie tie to tie tie. What the hell is that?